Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. The EcoFo Blade is a robot lawnmower and lawn sweeper brimming with technology. It has a camera and lidar sensor to detect obstacles, centimeter accurate enhanced GPS for defining lawn borders without wires, and omnidirectional wheels for precise maneuvering. It uses AI to plan straight line mowing routes rather than the typical robot mower zigzag pattern. Together with its electronically height adjusted blades, EcoFlow claims it can evenly trim your lawn with no missed patches. EcoFlow is a company best known for their portable power stations, and they offer a battery and solar panel solution to run this whole setup off grid. I'll run through its setup and thoroughly test all its features to see if this is the right solution for you. By the end of the video, I really hope you'll have enough information to make an informed buying decision. Please feel free to use the timeline chapters if you want to jump around the video. So let's take a closer look. The blade can be bought on its own or with the optional lawn sweeper kit. I'll cover the lawn sweeper kit shortly. The blade comes well packaged and everything you need to get started is in the box, including the charging station with installation hardware, a power adapter, the antenna, cabling to connect the antenna and power, and spare blades. There's a quick start guide, but you can also download the complete user guide from EcoFlow's website. The blade itself weighs just over 12 kilograms and feels very well made, as you'd expect at this price. It has a removable and replaceable 298 watt hour LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery that comes pre-installed. You'll need the accompanying EcoFlow app to use the blade. The app also guides you through the initial setup, but I'll briefly cover the basics. Setup is easy, but you do need to ensure the base station is installed on flat ground and the antenna has a clear view of the sky, away from tall buildings and trees. All the cabling is clearly labelled and it'd be difficult to get anything wrong. You assemble the antenna tube, connect the 10 meter antenna extension cable to the base station and feed this cable through the pole and connect it to the antenna. Mount the antenna into the pole and drive the forks of the pole into the ground at your chosen location. Then connect the 10 meter power cable to the base station and the power adapter and then plug the power adapter in. You can then push the lawnmower into the charging station. It'll turn on and all being well, its LED will turn blue within 10 minutes. If not, you'll need to adjust the position of the antenna you can connect the mower with the app via Bluetooth. Most likely you'll be prompted to update the firmware, which I'd recommend. This did take a while, around 20 minutes. In the app, you can check antenna reception. If you don't have a particularly strong signal, you can try changing the position of the antenna. I followed EcoFlow's recommendations and got good reception straight off. It's worth noting that even though the mower has a battery, the dock itself needs mains power, not just to charge the mower, but also to feed the antenna when the mower is at work. The app gives you an option to practice controlling the mower with the on-screen joypad. I actually found this a little trickier than I was expecting. It did take me a few attempts to really get the hang of it. You only really need to manually control it once during the initial mapping, but even so, a physical remote would have been easier to use. Once you're happy with the initial setup, you can take the mower off the base station and secure the base station with the supplied pegs. You can also use the smaller pegs to tidy up the cabling if you want. You're now ready to map your lawn, Make sure your lawn is clear of any sticks, stones and any other obstacles before you start mapping. This is one of the cleverest features of Blade. Many robotic lawnmowers rely on the installation of a boundary wire around the perimeter of your lawn. With the Blade, you remote control it around the boundary of the lawn to construct the map using GPS. Typically, GPS wouldn't be accurate enough for this and that's where the antenna comes in. The Blade uses RTK, or real-time kinematic positioning, more commonly used in land surveying to enhance the accuracy of its GPS location. It compares GPS location data between the stationary GPS antenna and the moving mower to enhance location accuracy from meters to just centimeters. We'll see how well it works shortly. The app guides you through creating your first map, controlling the blade around the perimeter of your lawn using the on-screen joystick until it gets back to its start position. Tap on complete and you're now ready to mow your lawn. This might take you more than one attempt, especially with a more complex lawn. You can add additional areas and connect these together with predefined paths, and you can create restriction zones, in this case around a trampoline and flower beds. Before starting mowing, you can configure work settings, basically the mower's speed and the cutting height. You can set the cutting height from 20 millimeters to 76 millimeters. Both lawns I tested blade on are pretty uneven, so I set this initially to 40 millimeters and set the speed to normal. Then you can tap start. The blade has three replaceable razor blades that are screwed into its floating base. Its rear wheels have deep tread 
and its rather unusual omnidirectional front wheels are angled at 45 degrees for what EcoFlow calls multi-directional movement. First off, I tried it on a small section of my lawn which is quite uneven and sloped. I had mowed this lawn less than a week before my test which EcoFlow do recommend. The blade did a good job and only got stuck when I reduced the height of the blades all the way down to 20mm, the minimum cutting height. I could get away with 30mm on my lawn without any issues. Whatever map you create, the blade uses AI to plan its mowing route. So rather than the random zigzag pattern you get with many robot lawn mowers, it cuts in straight lines for a more professional looking cut. And GPS accuracy is very good, it cut the same area I mapped on each attempt. After it's finished cutting back and forth, it then cuts the perimeter in one continuous movement before returning to the base. You can turn this feature off in the app or choose how many perimeter laps you want it to do. Initially it did have trouble returning to its charging base. I had to reposition the base and remap the patch of lawn. You really do need the base on completely flat ground as EcoFlow recommend. I left the blade cutting this small lawn every few days for over a month. But I also tried blade on a larger and more challenging lawn, around 500 meters squared in size with two zones joined with a connecting path and multiple exclusion zones. A larger, more complex lawn like this does take some time to map and controlling blade around any tricky sections does require some care. This lawn hadn't been cut for a few weeks and so it was probably a little too long, but it made for a good test of the limits of the lawn mower. This lawn was also quite sloped and uneven, but the mower did a pretty good job overall. It could have done with overlapping its stripes a little more. You can just about see it's left some lawn between the stripes. I only had time to do this large lawn once, but I'm confident these would be cut on future passes. I had to do quite a lot of manoeuvring in the tighter sections between the apple tree beds, which took some time and did get a little stuck on a few occasions. Even with their deep tread, the wheels did spin a little, but the mower cleverly retried these sections again, approaching from different angles, and it did successfully get even these harder sections cut. After completing the first larger section of lawn, it had to travel up a quite steep bank to the second section of lawn that I defined as a joining path. It coped with this fine and cut the second section of lawn before travelling back to the charging station. EcoFlow quotes 240 minutes of runtime, but that will depend on the lawn. The larger lawn took almost 2 hours and used over 70% of charge. It takes around 130 minutes to charge the battery with a 36 volt 5 amp charger. If the mower does run out of charge, it will return to its base station and recharge itself. EcoFlow does sell a specific IP65 weatherproof battery for the blade, the Smart Extra battery. This is a 1024 watt hour LFP battery which can be charged via solar for a completely off grid solution if you don't have power nearby. But you could also use any portable power station. I use the EcoFlow Delta 2 together with EcoFlow's bifacial 220 watt solar panel with a larger lawn. But most of these portable power stations aren't waterproof, including the Delta 2, so you would need some enclosure for permanent installation. The lawnmower does come with spare blades and you can see how these blades look after a month of fairly heavy use. What's particularly noticeable is just how quiet the lawnmower is. From around 1 metre away I measured between 55 and 59 decibels, around 10 to 15 decibels above background noise. You can barely hear it 10 metres away. You could even set the blade to cut your lawn at night without annoying your neighbours if you really wanted to, which I did try once. If you are using it at night, you can enable gentle mode, which is even quieter, just a little slower. You can also turn off the blade lighting in the app and reduce the voice announcement volume for full stealth mode. The blade has a LiDAR sensor and camera which work together to create a 3D map of the lawn for obstacle detection and avoidance. I tested this several times and every time it negotiated its way around various objects and people I introduced into its path. But I would still keep pets and children out of the way. It will depend on your lawn, but you may still need to go around its edges with a strimmer every once in a while. EcoFlow recommends leaving at least 15 centimetres to the edge of your lawn. Even leaving this distance, I was expecting the blade to struggle with a fence around part of my garden, especially when it was turning with a large lawn sweeper attached. But it appears EcoFlow have thought of this, and there weren't any collisions in my testing. The lawn sweeper attachment is an optional extra and attaches to the rear of the unit with a cable and is tightened in place with a knob. A recent firmware update flashed up a warning that this knob needs to be fully tightened so it sits slightly recessed, otherwise it might become detached. You need to tilt the sweeper up slightly to get the knob recessed. To use this attachment you have to change from mow to sweep in work settings, and then start a separate lawn sweep. I did initially think it would do the mow and sweep at the same time. The sweeper is much noisier and measured just over 70 decibel. It's not excessively loud by any means, 
but I wouldn't run this overnight. It has a rotating brush with thick plastic bristles. This works very well, a lot better than I was expecting. Even after a light mow of a small lawn, it still picks up plenty of cuttings. The blade even knows when the bag is full and returns to the base station with a notification via the app that it needs emptying. Once emptied, if you tap start, it'll continue where it left off. The app lets you configure a cutting and sweeping schedule via its automation rules. So you can have it cutting the lawn every week and sweeping every two weeks, for example. Every cut and sweep is recorded in the app under work record. And there's a built-in rain sensor that works in tandem with the schedule. You can configure a rain delay of up to 24 hours to give the lawn time to dry. I tested this feature and it does work. The blade is IPX5 waterproof and can be left outside all year round. It can even be washed lightly with a hose to clean it. It did rain heavily for the first week I had it, which didn't cause any issues, but how it fares longer term remains to be seen. I'll report back in a future video and down in the description if I have any issues. If I end up leaving it out all year, I'd be inclined to build a small canopy for it to at least protect it from the worst of the weather. Perhaps that's something EcoFlow will release in the future. Together with a sweeper attachment, it's quite large to store away over the winter months. The EcoFlow has a built-in eSIM mostly intended for anti-theft. It's able to send its GPS location to the cloud and it's possible to remotely lock the blade if it has been stolen. Additionally, the blade can only be used by the original user unless it's explicitly shared. If another user tries to add the blade, there's a message that it's bound to another account. If I do want to share it with another user, I can add their email under device sharing. I would still be a little concerned leaving something of this value and so portable on my front lawn though, even with these security measures. The EcoFlow blade worked far better than I was expecting. Considering it was only announced at CES this year, that's even more impressive. And it's been continuously improved with firmware updates almost every week since I started testing it over a month ago. Its GPS mapping worked very well. It did a good job on both tricky lawns with its large wheels, floating blades and AI route planning and the lawn sweeper also did a great job. And with its camera and LiDAR sensor, I had no issues with obstacle avoidance. I only really had minor issues with it, and at least one of those issues could be considered user error. You really do need to find a completely flat spot for the charging station. Even with the base just slightly off level, the blade approaches at a very slight angle, and its hard rubber wheels slip on the charging station's smooth surface. Perhaps if the dock had a grippier finish, that would help. It did work a lot better when the dock was correctly installed. A more general issue is many people have more than one lawn to cut. Although the blade can move between sections of your lawn and over small obstacles, it's not going to get from my back garden to the front garden, for example, across large steps. And with any robotic lawnmower, you should give the lawn an initial cut with a regular lawnmower. Additionally, the edges of your lawn will still need a trim. All this is to say, I wouldn't get rid of your lawnmower, or at least strimmer, just yet. I did notice with a larger garden that there were a few thin strips of lawn left behind between the stripes, which I'm sure would disappear with additional passes. As I mentioned, I only cut this lawn once and it hadn't been immediately mowed before using the blade, so it didn't have ideal preparation. I'm also confident the amount of overlap could easily be tweaked in firmware if it was an issue. You can check the current price in the video's description, but the blade and lawn sweeper kit aren't cheap. And if you don't have power nearby, you'll most likely want to add in the optional smart extra battery and a solar panel. EcoFlow is pitching the blade against ride-on mowers and lawn mowing services, which does make sense. You could certainly spend a lot more on a ride-on mower, plus there's labour involved and running costs. There are cheaper robotic lawnmowers, like the comprehensive Work Landroid range, starting at almost one quarter of the price of EcoFlow solution. I've not tested them, so can't compare how they work, but the basic Landroid model at least requires a boundary wire and mows the lawn like a robot vacuum in a zigzag pattern. And the ones I've seen don't have an optional lawn sweeper. You can probably get away without the sweeper kit if your lawn doesn't get covered in leaves. In normal regular use, the mower is only going to be cutting a small amount of grass on each run, so there wouldn't be much grass to sweep. But the sweeper does work very well. EcoFlow boasts a four-year warranty, a dedicated service team for one-on-one -on -one support, and free accessories for life, which does all sound very good. I've not yet tested their support, but I'll report back in a future video and update my written article at thetechnologyman.com when I do. Overall, this is one of the most impressive bits of tech I've tested, and if you've got a big lawn to mow and are considering your options, I'd definitely add it to your shortlist. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. I read every comment and will do my best to respond. I do hope you found this video useful. Please like the video if you did. I'm releasing videos every week on the latest technology and how to get the most out of it, so please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to tap the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thanks for watching.